Welcome to the City Current Show, powered by Hagen Botham Insurance and Financial Services. This show focuses on sharing good news and powering the good in our community. Now here's your host, Andrew Bartolotta. Welcome back to the City Current Show, where we bring you inspiring stories of individuals and organizations making a difference and powering the good in our community and around the globe. I'm your host, Andrew Bartolotta, and today we are truly honored to have Matt Buckus, son of the legendary Dick Buckus, who is widely regarded as one of the greatest and most intimidating linebackers in professional football history. The NFL Network named Dick Buckus the most feared tackler of all time, and he has been repeatedly ranked among the top players in NFL history. Matt Buckus continues his father's legacy through his role as president of the Buckus Foundation, promoting health and wellness. So we'll discuss the foundation's mission, the prestigious Buckus Award, Team Buckus Community Events, and Matt's podcast, Buckus Beyond the Line. So join us for an engaging conversation about the enduring legacy of the Buckus family and their ongoing mission to empower communities. Matt, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Of course. Okay, so first, can you uh, start off by sharing some fond memories of growing up with your father, Dick Buckus? Oh, they start out start off with the emotional stuff, huh? Oh, you know, a lot of people think, um, you know, how he played is how he was at home. Um, he wasn't like that. I, well, I mean, you know, to, at certain points, you know, we, we all were teenagers, uh, my sister, brother, and I, but, uh, you know, we grew up on a farm in Florida. Uh, I was two when my dad retired. So, you know, a lot of people think that I saw him play. I just kind of say that, you know, I, I watch highlights and I hear other people's talk. So the, from what I hear, he, he was pretty good. So, but no, him, my mom and him were always at games. Um, you know, they weren't the leaders of the glee club, but, uh, you know, they'd be up in the corner and, and, uh, when my dad was doing NFL today, he would, uh, you know, he'd come watch my games at, at Loyola high school in, in Los Angeles, um, on Friday. And then he'd take the red eye, you know, to New York. So he could do, um, NFL today with, you know, Brent and Irv and those, and that, and that cast of characters. But, um, He's, he's the biggest heart that I, that I knew. He had a, um, uh, a sense of humor. Um, yeah, you know, people, you know, at first off, you know, he's kind of like a, you know, like a grizzly bear. He's always had, you know, his guard up because never really knew what, what, you know, people were out to, you know, either to be his friend or to get from him and stuff like that. But if you really knew him, um, he was a, he was a hell of a guy and, and a number one dad. Well said. Oh. And I think it's really cool when you look back at the history of uh, his parents being Lithuanian immigrants and how he really was able to make such a name for the Buckus family. And you're continuing that tradition. How did your father's career influence your passion for sports and ultimately philanthropy? So yeah, growing up in a, in a sports sports environment, um, yeah, you know, my dad didn't push us into anything, but he said, you know, try everything. Whether that college, he was like, you know, go to plays, go to different sports or whatever. My sister went to Notre Dame, my rival, I went to USC, my brother, St. Mary's in Moraga. And, um, but he was always humble. And, uh, we do the, you know, the Butkus Award and on the trophy, it says, not only are you a leader, but, uh, follow in the footsteps in the American tradition of giving back. Uh, he always had time for people. Uh, he always had, I wouldn't say always had time for autographs, but, uh, you know, the best that he could, you know, in today's world, it's just, uh, you know, more giving back and helping others seems more relevant than, than ever right now, uh, you know, in my lifetime. And, but, um, he was he was a generous generous guy, and um, did a lot of stuff that people didn't know. He was, uh, as I said, man. I, I, if I could be a half a man, he is, I'd, I'd be okay. 
and and you are more than that because you are continuing the uh the family tradition and legacy through the buckus foundation start by telling us what the buckus foundation is and its mission when my dad retired we moved down to florida and uh the the orlando orlando athletic club my dad had a friend there and he asked my dad you know if we could do the buckus award and my dad's, you know, a humble guy. He's like, oh, I'll get Nitschke, you know, get somebody else. But they kept bugging him, kind of. And, and uh, so he finally did it. And he said, you know, I want it to be two things. I want it to be first class and I want it to give back. So that's when it started in 85 and we were just college. We have since expanded it. When I came aboard, uh, I think 15 years ago, we have an I play clean where I talk to kids about staying off of steroids and we have a takes heart. So I was like, let's add uh, high school and pro to that. So that was a, a good story about that. Our, our first high school winner was Manti Teo in, in Hawaii at Punahou High School, dear friend still. And uh, so my dad and I had to go to Hawaii, you know. Then from Hawaii, we went to Wake Forest <laughs> for Aaron Curry's <laughs> diff different different locale but um but the, the you know the bosworth won the first two back in, in oklahoma and we've had some great winners you know uh, uh next week i'll be going to the hall of fame and patrick willis is going to be is going to be enshrined uh demarcus ware was last year you know some current players or you know luke keekley you got the micah parsons of the group so yeah it's it's our selection committees, uh, 51 selection guys, and and are, are serious about it. We're talking to the Big Ten Network and the University of Illinois to host it. So it's it's coming back home. Previously, it was, it was out in California where my immediate family lives. I'm in here in Chicago. I love that you're bringing it back home. What's uh, unique is where I live in DeSoto County, Mississippi in 2018, Nakobe Dean, a uh, Horn Lake High School player, was named the Buckus Award winner and now plays for the Philadelphia Eagles. So there's a lot of cool uh, ties in there. We, what's pretty cool, we're the only, only organization that does the three levels, and we surprise the kid at their high school. So if I remember correctly, I drove from Chicago. I drove down to LSU. You did. We did uh, Devin White, and then I drove to Horn Lake from from uh, Baton Rouge, and um, I, I, I keep in touch with the guy. So he's a guy that can win it in three phases. And so you you mentioned the Takes Heart camp initiative and campaign. Uh, explain a little bit more about how it's helping raise awareness about heart health and why that's important for you and your family. Well, what we do, you know, the Butkus Foundation, and then we have the Takes Heart and the Butkus Award. So... Uh, the takes art is when we started, um, I tell, maybe tell you the history, obviously, you know, my dad, my dad was good friends with Murphy Dunn. He was the, the pianist in the Blues Brothers and he was a comedian. So, and they were writing a script. My dad always wanted to do a, a sitcom about his job, you know, moving, you know, as movers with his brothers in, you know, like you know, throwing couches off balconies and stuff like that. They were kind of old and junk, you know, and then, the, you know, maybe a client was downstairs and they'd be like trying to hire them for another job. And here comes the, you know, the, the couch out the window and many great stories. So they were writing a script and Murphy wasn't feeling well. So he knew some, some guys in, at, in Orange County, California and Orange, at St. Joseph's Hospital and uh, called them up and was wanted to go get a scan that they did. And they said, yeah, sure, come on in. He's like, I want to bring a friend, Dick Buckus. And they were like, oh, that'd be great if, if he had a scan and he thought it was worthwhile, maybe he could, you know, do a radio or a PR marketing spot for us. And we're like, and he was like, sure. So he went in. Murphy goes in, he comes out, he had, you know, had a little bit of a pneumonia, a little fluid on his lung, and my dad went in. He was kind of, you know, wary about maybe Murphy with, you know, like candid camera, kind of, you know, like surprise. And 
So he went in and and he was in there, you know, a long time. The, you know, the they came out, called the cardiologist in, Dr. Larry Santora, and and uh and they he, you know, they said, When was your last stress test? And he's like, you know, my my doctor still smokes cigarettes, like turn your head and cough type of deal. Right. And um so he went in, he did the the stress test and he failed, I guess one, you know, ventricle or something wasn't closing. And um, so they were, you know, you have to sign the paperwork to come in and do the NGO. And, uh, you know, if it gets, you know, they get in there and it's worse, they, you know, you sign off on letting them do what they need to do. My dad was pretty instinctive guy, even through life and even when he played. Um, he knew and well even when one when, when my curfew was he could probably sleep and wake up right at the time i was <laughs> asked to be home but anyway um so he you know they were like oh it's like a 24-hour deal so he, he went home and and uh started back in a bag and my mom was like um uh you're just you know it's kind of an in and out thing and he's like no i don't it's not i don't think so i don't feel I don't feel, he felt fine. Mm -hmm. No symptoms, you know, he's just like, I don't feel good about this. So that they went in within, you know, what he was, well, the test was, you know, in the morning and then he went in the next morning, 24 hours. So he had a five-way bypass. So three were 99, one was 98. The other one was like 89. And the doctor said, uh, you had a foot in the grave and the other on a banana peel. So, uh, so that was, that was crazy. You know, he tackled his rehab and his numbers like he did on the field. Uh, he was, and then that hospital now is the, you know, the Dick Buckus cardiac center. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to provide that scan to first responders, veterans, uh, you know, maybe full former players that are in the area. So we've scanned several thousand there, saved a lot of lives. And our goal was to get a scanning, like a, that type of scanning facility in every NFL city. So, and now that we have, and now we have that. And they're roughly like here in Illinois, you don't even need a prescription to get it. It's under, we got them down to, you know, it's under, they got $150, $100, and uh, it's your EBTC scan. It's, you know, your calcium score and stuff like that. So that's what we're all about. I love that the foundation is really promoting heart health and the importance of those early cardiovascular assessments because that is so important and helps people, I mean, live longer. I mean, the heart is a huge part of, of how you uh, live and breathe. And so being able to make sure that it's strong and healthy is so important. Let's uh, move on a little bit to Team Buckus, which is okay. a super fun part of, of your yeah. work. Talk about what inspired the formation of it. So I started Team Buckus, which is uh, you know a company in Chicago that does events. We do Team Buckus tailgates at Navy Pier at uh, the Billy Goat, uh, the, the famous... Saturday yeah. Night Live, Billy Goat, and uh, we're there like three hours before the game and eat and drink for free for $51. And uh, we give uh, the charity, local charities, and uh, then we water taxi over to Soldier Field. You know, if you're familiar with Chicago, AV Piers, like not, you know, a 10-minute boat ride. And it's usually uh, beautiful out. You see the, the skyline and and hopefully the Bears this year. It, it's kind of tough when you're 0 4 or whatever we were last year. You know, people still <laughs> came out. You know, you got diehard Bear fans. But hopefully we we uh, we do a little better this year. And 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 while I'm on this show, uh, we start out with um, your city's uh, Tennessee Tennessee Titans. If if if, if we're in Nashville, so. Uh, you know, I want to invite all the all the Titan fans to come on out. 
whoever's coming to Chicago, come to the Team Butkus tailgate. And y'all do seem to have so much fun. And I love that you were already tailgating. And so how do you make it a, uh, a give back? And so being able to bring that component to it is not only something that is part of you and your family's legacy, but it's something that is really ingrained in the work that is a sports philanthropy. And so being able to sure. element to it is so much fun. And then the water taxi, there really is nothing like uh, growing up in Chicago. There's nothing like going to Navy Pier, nothing like going to Soldier Field. And and you really feel like you're on an ocean. I mean, Lake Michigan is just giant. Yeah. And so it's, it's so much fun. And so speaking of fun, you've got Team Buckus, but you also have the Buckus Beyond the Line podcast. Yeah, I, I, I tried it out. Um, so I had like 31 episodes and then, um, then, you know, then the shocker came, right? I had some, some great guests here in Chicago that obviously that I know throughout the years, I was the, the you know, the ball boy for the 85 Bears and 86, if you remember, uh, we played Dallas in Wembley. I think that was the first, you know, European game, you know, the Wembley London game. So I, you know, I know the, the, you know, the Richard Dance and the Singletary's and the, and those guys here and the, and the Keith Van Horn of, you know, you my fellow USC alum. So I was able to, you know, it was nice enough for those, those guys to come in. And I've, you know, the first one was with my dad and my dad would, you know, pop in every now and then. And, and uh, then uh, obviously that, that, fateful night or however you want to say it i was in washington i was going to the bears at washington game so at, at least he showed up that night and the bears showed up he helped them i i, re, I'm, I'm, I remember that you know we we did a number on the on washington and then i headed to california right away um but uh but yeah so, and just to, you know, back to Team Butkus, we want to do, you know, more. We want to do like, you know, a Cubs game, a Sox game. We want to have, you know, girls softball. I, I live here in the South Loop. It's kind of by Soldier Field. We have, I look out my balcony and it's Grant Park and, and all the, the softball fields. And, you know, we'd like to, to have, a, you know, a, a benefit concert. You know, I, I know some people in the music business and the sports business, you know, but kiss isn't a, isn't a bad name to have in Chicago. So, uh, so we're, we're trying to just plan, you know, fun stuff to, and, and give back. Last year we had the suicide prevention on 9-11, two years ago, we had the, you know, the, the widows of the, the fallen at 9-11 and, the, the police and fire and so yeah so we we have fun give back and take the boat over and see if the bears could put a couple wins together hey there you go super bowl where's the super bowl this year is in new orleans so maybe they should get back there but we'll, we'll see and when you look at the legacy that you're leaving what legacy do you hope to leave through your work with not only the buckus foundation but carrying on the family name legacy that I'd like to leave. You know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a fun and happy person all, all the time. I think uh, I, I try not to, to get down. There are some down times, but uh, you gotta look at the, the, uh, you know, the, the brightness of the, the situation uh, with my dad, you know, he was pretty much in pain. So, which we didn't, you know, as a family, we knew, but not, as, as hard as it was, you know, his mind was there, you know, he was 80 and, you know, he was, he had that like neuropathy in, in one leg. So, it, you know, you couldn't like push off, you know, it's, he stopped playing golf. Cause you know, he'd always say like, he'd go up, walk on a hill and do the Shecky green down the hill, you know, the, the tumble. So, um, but following in his footsteps you know my i i'm a single guy so i'm kind of married to my work and that and that's to carry on the legacy you know my brother and sister are married with family so i'm the i'm the one here in chicago they're back in uh southern california and uh just 
just seeing people and seeing the fire and uh, a lot of the 51s at the game. So whatever I can do to, to, to let people know what kind of person he was off the field and, and that he helped people. Uh, one article said he, you know, he did more off the field than on the field after, uh, you know, after his playing days. So, uh, if I could, like I said, if, you know, if I could just be 75% of what he did, um, and carry it on and, and we have the, uh, you know, the, the, the linebacker guys to, to help carry the torch. I want to do like a linebacker camp here in Chicago. I have a lot of good ideas. It's just, uh, you know, we need to find more partners and sponsorship to, to help me do it, to help us do it. So, uh, well, well, <laughs> well said there, because I know that your dad's legacy, we've talked about it throughout this conversation, but it is something that is not only in Chicago, but beyond is something that is well recognized. I, I was telling you beforehand about how my uh, uncle John has his Jersey uh, in his, his, uh, bar at home and so uh his sign jersey and so the buckus name is something that is is all about not only sports but giving back and so for you to be able to continue that legacy of your father and the and the work that you're doing i i know for a fact that he is uh, so proud of you and what you're doing and so how can people join with you to partner alongside and help support these efforts just like everything, you can go to the website, you know, the buckusfoundation.org. Uh, you can go to, once you go there, I mean, my my information's on there. So my name and phone number, and I, I have no qualms talking to people. My, my number is public. Uh, the, you know, the Butkus Award is more about, you know, the winners and our selection committee and what we do. That's the buckusaward.com. Um, and then Team Butkus, you know, local events here in Chicago that we try to put on, especially, you know, I'm just doing uh, Bears home home tailgates right now. It's teambutkus.com. Those are the three ways to get a hold of me and to help. Well, Matt Butkus, thank you so much for sharing your incredible journey, your impactful work with the Butkus Foundation, Team Butkus, and also the work that you are able to do to promoting health, clean play, and community service. It's inspiring for us all. To learn more about the Buckus Foundation, how you can get involved, visit their website. And thank you so much for powering the good in our community and around the globe. You got it, buddy. <laughs>